In Radiant, under your entity browser, look up Fog and drag in the World Fog Volume. You want to expand this over your playable area as this works based off the player rather than an actual 3D thing. So if you leave the volume, it will stop the World Fog altogether. Once you've placed your World Fog, go to Entity Info, untick Disable Fog, and you will see this black shit. That's fine though. And we'll change our FSI to MP underscore Chinatown. Now we're going to open this in Ape. In Ape, you want to copy the MP underscore Chinatown fog, and then paste it into your own GTT. All right, so there's two types of fogs here. We have world fog and atmospheric fog. So world fog is Donald Trump's wet dream. It works like a big circular wall around your map. You want to use world fog if you want to block visibility to your vista or whatever. Whereas atmospheric fog is physically based rendered, so it'll work with your geometry, and you want to use atmospheric fog for the fog effect. I recommend atmospheric over world fog if you're going for a look. However, if you do want to block visibility to things completely, use world fog. All right, before we start changing things, we want to save all and in Radiant, update our FSI to the new one. Once you've selected your fog from Ape, you want to set up your window so that you can see the camera and Ape at the same time. All right, starting out in the first category, which is density. Our first setting here is base distance and our second is half. So base will be the distance the fog starts out at 0% and half is, guess what, 50%. So if you set this value to 0, the fog will immediately start blending in to the halfway distance point of this value. So if you go 0 and 50, you'll see that it's a very quick fade straight into our fog. All right, as you can see in our view here, it immediately starts blending straight into the fog as our base distance is at 0. Now if we increase this to 25, you can see now we have about 25 units of nothing and then it starts blending in. So that's for distance. Height works the exact same way. Next we have our offset. This essentially moves the fog up and down. So you can move it really low, like so. As you can see, everything goes down. Or we can move it up. But honestly, I just leave that shit on zero. And these last settings, I wouldn't touch. Alright, so I'm going to set these settings to something reasonable, like... 2048 to A192. All right, now that we're done with our density, we need to decide if we're going to use atmospheric or world fog. I'm going to go over atmospheric first and then world fog second. So, next category, sun position. Offsets, they do what they say. <laughs> That's it. Next category, atmosphere fog. It's what we're here for. First up, make sure your sun's enabled. Okay, so we've got color settings, which do exactly that. So, as you can see, our fog is changing color here. I'm just going to go with uh, this color. Well, the sun should always be like a desaturated yellow, so it's good enough for me. For sun haze base and fade distance, leave these on the default values and move down straight to strength. So strength is exactly that. So if we up this to 5, our sun gets stronger. Now, actually to show a good comparison of our sun to atmospheric fog, I'm going to change the fog color to very saturated uh, purple and our sun to green just so that this way we get a nice visual representation of what we're doing here I'm gonna lower this to get a closer look and we can start adjusting our spread and strength so if we go up to one we can see our sun gets spread outwards more but if we go down to 0 0.1 it's at the sun so that's what spread does and strength is how strong it is just set the settings you want and just go with what you're happy with. But I'm going to set this uh, back down to 1.25 to 1.25 and set my colors back. All right, next setting is density. So it does exactly that. You can go above 1 with this. You go all the way up to 4, but of course it isn't recommended. And we have brightness. So we can up this to 9, 13, 2, etc then opacity is exactly that. It's a very self-explanatory settings here. And that wraps it up for atmospheric fog. Right, so world fog is even simpler. So if we switch to world fog, as I explained earlier, this works like a wall. So if we have our opacity on one, this will 100% block vision. However, you can still see little bits of the gap. That's because we have our half distance very fucking high. So if we lower this, we can see that it actually does block the vision. So if I lower this really fucking low, all the way down to 256, we can't see shit. So that's essentially it for uh, World Fog. 
Intensity is just self-explanatory. Intensifies things, fog is the color. And that's it. That is world and atmospheric fog. Now we're gonna move on to lit fog, which is what everyone calls volumetric lighting. Okay, so back in Radiant, once again in the Entity Browser, look up Fog and drag in this time the Lit Fog. Once again, you want to expand this across your playable area. And in Entity Info, pick out Fog. So the same fog as before. Now to actually see what this is going to look like with a light and our sun, we are going to have to drag in our Light Entity. So from the Entity Browser, drag in our Light and simply make it bright enough so that we can see it like so I'm going to expand the radius and enable volumetric this is so we can see our volumetric lighting under the lip fog every light will need volumetric if you want to use the lip fog on it now be careful with this because this does use a fuck ton of performance especially if you're spamming this shit then in Ape, duplicate our fog. I'm just going to put volumetric at the end of it. And then untick atmospheric and tick lit fog. Now save all and apply the new fog. Right, as we can see, we can't see much volumetric lighting happening. Now that's because our base distance is at 2048. If we put this down to zero, we can see we're starting to see our volumetric lights right here. Now if you have the base distance up, it'll disappear based on that base distance this is especially good for indoor environments where you're walking through a lot of volumetric areas you do want to have this so it doesn't just block your player's vision with fucking fog everywhere don't want to do a track and hit him with the transit but i am going to leave this down to 50 and the half distance at 2048 now, lit fog does affect the sun coming through as well. So now if we get a good angle here with the sun shining through and up our fog density scaler, you can see the sun rays beaming through, mate. But then again, this also affects our entire lit fog. So it depends on what you're going for. Our phase distribution is like spread in a way but reversed like the value so if we up it we can see that everything gets closer to the source so that's that our scattering albedo is kind of like opacity so as you can see it's less opacity is that a word i don't give a fuck it is now but i am going to leave this just on one uh density scalar is again just density our probe light scatter intensity will affect how much the lift fog contributes towards the probe bake. So the higher you have this, and if the probe itself has volumetric ticked, the more the volumetric lighting will have effect in the reflection probe's ray tracing. And sun color override is just that. So we can override the sun lift fog just like that. I don't change that because it's unnatural, personally. Alright, that wraps it up for part 3 of the lighting tutorial series. Hope it's been helpful. If you liked the video, like it. If you didn't, dislike it. Leave a comment if you want me to cover something else. And subscribe if you haven't. Ladders cunts.